Hello, my name is Annie and I am one of the creators of the Steel Made Flat Top and today I have some unboxing therapy for you. I'm going to be unboxing one of our Steel Made Flat Top starter kits and I'll share some of the instructions and also some tips and tricks for your first use. A little bit about Steel Made is that all of our products are made in Kansas using American steel, so we are 100% made in the USA. Our standard flat top weighs 30 pounds and it is 27 inches by 20 inches and made out of 3 16 mild steel. All right, let's get started. And fun little fact, I was the first one to ever use a flat top and it's come a long way for good reason. Da, da, da. All right, let's see what we have here to start with. Everything is really well packaged because we want everything to be safe in transit as much as possible. We try to package everything compact so it doesn't get damaged. Um, boxes get thrown around in transit and it happens often, but we do the best that we can. The first thing I'm going to pull out is our accessories. These are two bottles. You can usually fill them with water or oil, your choice. Um, sometimes people put different types of oil or dressing. Barbecue sauce, we have some great fire beef barbecue sauce in there. Um, then there are two spatulas, one that is slotted, one is that, that is solid, and a food scraper. These are basic, great utilities to use when you are cooking with the flat top. You will use them very often, especially the water bottle for when cleaning the flat top. You'll want to spray it with the water and then just scrape everything with the fruitscape off and into the drain holes. The next thing we have is our flat top scrub. Flat top scrub is used when you have food particles on the flat top that will not come off with just water. It's not very often that that will happen. It usually happens when you have something like fish with a dressing or uh, meat or chicken and the dressing really cooks onto the flat top and you need something a little bit more coarse to scrub it. And you never wanna use soap or, or a harsh abrasive scrubber on your flat top because it will scrape off the seasoning. So this flat top scrub, you'll sprinkle some of it on top of it where when the flat top's fairly cool, a little warm, put some water in and then use a rag or a mild scrubber and just scrub this around on there and it'll take all food particles off. Next we have the flat top oil. This is what you'll put on your flat top after every use. So if you want to get a really good seasoning, I'll show you how to do that pretty soon here. It's quick and easy and, and really tasty to make the seasoning or create a seasoning. But the flat top oil is what you'll put in at the end after every cook. You'll just rub a little bit on there with a paper towel and let it cook in as the, the flat top starts to cool. So it'll cook into the flat top, help your seasoning, protect it from rusting and keep it nice and um, create that non-stick barrier on there, which is part of the seasoning process. You also have all these wonderful instructions, which we'll go through on some of it, but also included in your instructions is a drip tray. This is a drip tray. This is a standard drip tray for our starter kit. We do have other drip tray options. Today, I'm going to be using a, an electric coiled stove. So this is the type of drip tray that will fit in between the burners on an electric uh, coiled stove. If you are using an electric glass top stove, you'll receive spacers that will go in each corner of the stove top and you can set your flat top on top of there. And you might receive a triangle drip tray based upon what type of burner do you have on your glass top stove top. Please contact our support to determine what drip tray will work best for your stove top because for gas stove tops, we also have a um, slanted drip tray that will meet the needs better because usually there's a little lip on there. So we do cater to the needs of different stove tops with those drip trays. So just message us and they'll, we'll have somebody help you with that. And we have the instructions manual on the inside. It's really detailed. Please, 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 if you get one of these, go through it, read it, look at the wonderful pictures because there's a lot of great information in there. A lot of people could just kind of forget it and try to figure it out on their own. But there's a lot of information about warping, about heat zones, about how to keep it clean and what should you should initially do, which I'll do a little bit of that today, but it's in more detail in this awesome manual. Next, you'll see I have two cardboard boxes in here. These are just spacers to allow for the flat top to sit inside of the box and not uh, rumble around to protect it and the corners. So I'm gonna take those out. And then on the inside, we have the flat top. I'm going to try to pull it up by the bag. Tilt it. 
You'll see it is in a bag. And this bag is also has a coating on the inside. Um, you'll see oil often. We try to dry them off as much as possible, but the oil is a protecting barrier because in transit, we don't want your flat top to start to rust. And you never know what the temperature is going to be and what zone um, you're going to as far as humidity. So if you see oil, that's a good thing. That means we have done the right process and it has been protected. Um, sometimes it dries in on there pretty well and you won't see as much. Other times you'll see a little bit more. It just depends on how long it was sitting on the shelf, but it, they are all, hand oiled by our staff here, so nothing goes out the door without being checked and made sure that there's no, no rust on there. The next step is to take this bag off. It has a large Ziploc bag. If you want to keep this bag and there's no holes in it, you can keep it for storage. It's a great option. We also provide the option to purchase sleeves for our flat tops, so check out the website, Steel Made USA, for that, um, just to store nicely and keep it from rusting or getting dirty within your cabinet. But you can also use these plastic bags if they're in good shape. Take it out of the bag and we're going to wash it with soap and water, both sides. You wanna make sure you get both sides because the burners are going to be making contact with the backside and you don't want it to start smoking and smelling a lot. And then of course you're gonna be cooking on the top side. We well, do use a food grade oil, so there's not much concern with any issues with that, but you still wanna start with a clear coating, nothing on there so that you can season it how you want it. I have already washed with a mild soap and water and kind of warm water. I've washed off this flat top and I've placed it on my coiled stove. Underneath the drain holes here, before turning it on, I placed the drip tray. Please make sure that when you put the drip tray down that it's clean and you don't have any issues with um, overflow or any grease leaking out while you're cooking. You wanna clean it every time after you cook. A uh, little tip is to buy two. You can buy an extra one on our website, Steel Made USA, and then you can rotate them because they are dishwasher stay made from stainless steel. So you can have one in the dishwasher cleaning and you have another one to use. I actually use multiples just because I like to cook different things and I'm kind of lazy with the dishes. So it is heating up now and we're going to bring it to a medium to um, medium low heat. You never ever put your flat top on high but especially for your first seasoning. You always wanna season on a medium heat or medium low because you wanna slowly cook greases or oils into the flat top to create that non-stick barrier. My personal favorite is to use bacon when seasoning because it creates, the fats in our bacon are really great at soaking into the mild steel to create that non-stick barrier and then also it smells good and you can eat it afterwards. I just have some regular bacon. I did not do anything super thick, super fatty because I don't want a ton of grease for the first time I'm using this or I suggest you just do a regular cut bacon until you're really skilled with your tools and if you need to, you can scrape the grease in there. There will be grease, but it's easy to manage if you are used to working with it. If you notice when you put your flat top on there and the grease starts flowing towards your drain holes, then you need to level out your, st your stove. Most stoves, unless it's a built-in into the countertop stove, will have feet on the bottom. Please level those out as you see where the grease is going, uh, and then you won't have that problem anymore. It should just stay right on the flat top, and you can scrape it into the drain holes as needed. I'm gonna put some bacon on here, but I'm not going to overload it for my first use because this has no non-stick barrier on it yet. Um, putting it on while the flat top is not all the way hot because I want it to slowly heat up and start breaking down the fats in the bacon. And then I can control how much grease gets on there because I really don't need a ton to season it. Once I have some grease going, I'll season it. Um, I'll spread it out and put most of it into the drip tray and wipe it down, turn off the burners and let it cook into the flat top to start creating that nice seasoning barrier. You'll notice that there's a little bit of smoke here for the first time. That is completely normal. As with any cooking utensil that you use, you're gonna burn off a little bit of the excess oil that you have that's already soaked into the steel. That's why we use a food grade oil so that you can actually be safe using that or using it with that oil cooking off of it. Don't worry about it. It's totally normal and it will only happen about the first couple times until you make that seasoning um, or create that seasoning on your flat top. Once that seasoning is all over in a nice dark, dark brown, almost black color, not thick, but color, you won't have that smoking anymore. A little bit of information about when cooking with bacon. When you first put it on there, on a bare mild steel product, it's going to stick. But as the bacon cooks and when it's ready to be flipped, it will release from the steel and you, then you can flip it. So if you sit here and try to move it a lot, 
and it's not actually moving off of the spot for you, that means it needs a little bit more time to cook and keep it at that low heat while you're cooking. Don't increase the heat. You have to be patient the first few times. After you've created the seasoning and got it to where it's really nonstick, you'll be able to heat it and just use it and not have to worry about it, um, anything really sticking. But for the first few times, let it cook a little bit, break down the fats, and then once it does, everything will move around just fine. All right, I've cooked just about, I think, eight pieces of bacon. Not, I didn't fill it all up. Now, when you have a seasoning on there and you've become proficient with using the, the tools and scraping grease when needed, you know, you can fill up this whole thing and it works great. I've done it many times. But for the first use, I would suggest just keeping it to a simple amount of bacon. Um, don't go overboard because you'll be a little overwhelmed, especially with the smoke that's burning off for the first time or, or the oils that are burning off the first time. So I did, I think, about, um, eight to 10 pieces on here of regular bacon and I have a decent amount of grease, but it's enough grease that I need to scrape it off. So I'm just going to scrape it into the drain hole and any other little food particles I'm gonna scrape off in there. This is gonna be pretty loud on the video. So I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna scrape all the food particles in here and then I'm gonna take my paper towel and just wipe it down um, just to get any excess. Like I want some left on there. I want a layer of grease, but I don't want it pooled on there. So I'm just gonna wipe down any excess and let it then soak in. I'm gonna do the edges and the front. My burners are all off, but it will stay hot for quite a while. So make sure you don't get burnt while doing this and just kind of um, scoop everything into the drain holes, let it cool down, and then your seasoning process has started. Okay, I went ahead and wiped down the flat top. I still have a layer of the oil sitting on there. There are already some dark spots forming from the bacon, which is exactly what you want. You want this flat top to turn a deep brown color and the more you cook on it the more it will start to turn that color so don't be alarmed when you're like oh no it's dark and i can't get it clean you never wash this with soap and water if you accidentally get something on there that you don't really want on it like some kind of soap or shampoo or something then you use a little bit of steel wool and get it off if you leave water on there you can use steel wool to get any rust off if you had happen to have rust but this layer of oil will protect it from rusting um, it'll bake in there, it'll make it non-stick, and it'll start to turn that gorgeous brown color. So don't be alarmed, that is what you want. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions about the Steel Made Flat Top Starter Kit, please visit SteelMadeUSA.com and contact our amazing customer service. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel, Steel Made USA, for tips and tricks.